The story of UAB basketball is an ambitious one whose first chapter was written 25 years ago. It is the story of a legendary coach who had the vision to see a college basketball powerhouse in the middle of football country and the men who helped unite a city divided through decades. Strangely enough, the story of UAB basketball began in Los Angeles, California, where UCLA head coach Gene Barto had just taken his second Bruin team to the Final Four. I had contact from Jerry Young soon after the NCAA tournament. They wanted to start a Division I program here at UAB. And uh, at this point, I still wasn't uh, convinced. But another couple weeks later, they, I came to Birmingham and met with them. And uh, so on June 15, 1977, I pulled the trigger to come to UAB, and I, I never, ever regretted it. Well, the first thing I did was call Larry Finch, and I took this job. And I said, Larry, I'm going to be in Birmingham the next three days. They're going to announce me as the new head basketball coach. Do you want to come with me? And he said, I'll be there. So I got the basketball staff organized, bing, bang, bong, real quick. We went to work recruiting players, even though we were not going to have a team that next year. With nothing to sell other than their reputations as coaches, recruiting would be a challenge for the staff. That didn't stop Coach Barto from setting his sights on the state's prized recruit, Woodlawn High School star Oliver Robinson. Well, I think there's several keys to the foundation of this program. Uh, the biggest one has to be Oliver Robinson coming to UAB and developing into the superstar he became. The first time I met Coach Barto was uh, in, in Gate City where I lived in the, in the housing projects and uh, I knew he was a legend, you know, the day that I actually laid my eyes on him. It was great to have the hometown guy, the guy from Woodlawn, uh, right here in Birmingham playing for, for UAB. Well, you know, it was the best decision my mother ever made for me. <laughs> it was. When I reflect back, uh, my mother knew more about making history than I did because that was one of the things she told me. She said, well, you know, you sign, You'll be the first player to ever sign a four-year basketball scholarship at the school, and that's one record they can never take away. After filling his first team with heralded players from across the country, Coach Bartow turned his attention to preparing for the program's first season. On October 15, 1978, UAB basketball held its first official practice at Bell Gym. Socks were needed. The practice gear was new, the shoes were new, the balls were new, the jocks were new, the sweatbands were new. I remember the opening day of practice, Bell Gym was packed. There were three deep and it was an event itself. It was like they were getting ready to play a national championship game and it was the first day of practice because everything was shiny and new. You know, Bell Gym, as bad as it was, was as good as it's ever looked. and It was a special day. Then, on a cold November evening in 1978, UAB basketball was born. More than 15,000 people crowded into the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center, and thousands more watched on TV as the Blazers tipped off against Nebraska in the program's first game. It was a great night. The game with Nebraska opening the first basketball game in the history of this university. Major college right in the start. Almost 15,000 there in the beautiful arena. Uh, it was, uh, it, I'm sure, Jerry Young, who, along with Dick Hill, put all this together, had to be very, very pleased. You know, the first game against Nebraska was, you know, it's, it's almost amazing that the whole event was pulled off. This had never happened at this level anywhere in America. Most teams or schools had come up through the ranks to start basketball. We started from absolutely nothing a few months prior. We had the great crowd, we had the live television, and what everybody had been talking about and picturing and saying, they can't do that, uh, they hired Barto, are you kidding, from UCLA? Suddenly it was here and, and we were on our way. Uh, the only one bad thing happened that night. The good guys didn't win, we didn't win the game. Nebraska won the game, but we had a game the next night against San Francisco State University, and uh, 
we got our first victory and we were off and running. Off and running indeed. Defying all odds, UAB won 15 games its first season and followed with an 18 and 12 mark and a trip to the NIT in the program's second season. While that was a remarkable story for a new program, everyone around UAB basketball felt the momentum was only beginning to surge. When I look at how the program uh, catapulted early on, it wasn't a surprise to the players. You almost knew that this team was, had set, out, was set out to do something that next year, which was really special. In the program's third season, UAB won the Sun Belt Conference and advanced to the NCAA Tournament. After beating Western Kentucky in the first round, the young program found itself face to face with one of college basketball's dynasties, the Kentucky Wildcats. When I look back at the Kentucky game and, and Coach Joe B. Hall and, you know, his team, um, it was, we knew we were going to beat them. It wasn't, it wasn't in the doubt in our mind because we had played them early in the year and had lost by six points. Now we're excited, real excited. And we weren't afraid when they saw us, you know, they looked at us, they didn't, they didn't respect us. But at the end, they knew they had been in a battle. Coach Bartow always talked about being in the big time, you know, big time. You know, you want to be in the big time, you got to win these type of games. And when we beat Kentucky, who's one of the top five programs in America, then we felt like we was in the big time. I would say that the Kentucky game in the uh, NCAA tournament in Tuscaloosa uh, at that time was a, a point in the UAB history that most people would say was the first major, major win. Do you believe this? The biggest win ever for this program, which is really just in its infancy. Incredible. Just the third year for this basketball program. Now they beat Kentucky. That certainly opened the eyes nationally that UAB had a basketball program. After falling to eventual national champion Indiana, the Blazers focused on the 1982 season, the last for the core of the team, seniors Oliver Robinson and Chris Giles. After winning the Sun Belt Conference for a second season, UAB earned a bye in the first round of the NCAA tournament. When the brackets were released, the Blazers saw a familiar name waiting for them, the defending national champion Indiana Hoosiers. The Blazers came into the game led by a group of seniors determined that this time the result would be different. The, the Indiana game was one that uh, was a revenge kind of situation from the year before. We came up for practice up in Nashville and when Coach Bardo used to always talk about hit every shot, hit every shot. And this particular day, we hit every shot. And he blew the whistle. He said, well, no player take another shot. If he do, I'm going to run him off the tee. And they carry over the next day when we played in the uh, I think we hit our first eight shots. We went out there to not ever give them a chance to win. And, and the game proceeded just like that. Uh, we, they never was in the game, not uh, one moment. Coach Knight never calls the first time out in the game. We said, we're going to make them call the first time out or they're going to be down 20 to nothing. From inside. Off the glass. He looked like he was going to force the shot. Still passed off to Robinson. Up off the glass. He had a foot a little large. And so it got to be about 14 to 2. And uh, and he called that time out. And Bobby Knight says, hold it. Let's take time. When we beat Indiana, some people may have thought that was an upset. We had players as good as Indiana. It was our opportunity to show the people of Indiana, which is supposed to be the basketball state, that the University of Alabama at Birmingham could play ball to. The UAB Blazers have beaten Indiana. The defending national champions are out of it. After looking so impressive night before... After beating Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers, the Blazers returned to Birmingham to face second-ranked Virginia, who was led by three-time National Player of the Year, Ralph Sampson. It was so much excitement in this town. I remember Oliver and I was walking to class, 
and the Hill Center message sign flashed out on the street. The Virginia game completely sold out. Wow. I, I, I felt that we could, could beat Virginia. I had the feeling that Ralph Sampson had to be controlled. Because Bardo would literally stand on a chair with a broom and make us shoot over the broom, pretending he was Ralph Sampson. I knew that Chris Giles, Norman Ankrum, Donnie Spear, Craig Lane would step up because we were playing against a big time center. Oliver and Chris and that whole bunch was was very special. That they they had a they were on a mission, and and nothing got in their way. I don't think anyone, probably besides Oliver, visioned that we would have that success because he he was a visionary. I predicted at a press conference before the game that we would win. That was, you know, one of those kind of uh, games that when you look back at it, um, it was it was destined for us to, to get them. Robinson pushes the ball up for it. Look at him with a smile on his face. Big the inside. And it's stopped on the other end by Spear, and he's fouled. It's, uh, it's very emotional. To, to think about how we celebrated and, and saw the newspaper the day after. With Birmingham has defeated Virginia, 68 to 66, and the crowd goes wild. The celebration begins in Birmingham. The Blazers have not talked to Virginia by two. People was everywhere. They was grabbing us. They was mobbing us. I mean, it just felt like we had won the national championship. As I look back on it, we were truly coming on as Birmingham's team. Not only were the UAB people excited after the Virginia game, but you had the Auburn people, you had the Alabama people, you had everybody pulling for UAB. They didn't look at it as UAB, they looked at hometown team doing some significant. Although the Blazers lost a close game with Louisville later that week, no one who had witnessed UAB's historic win over Virginia would forget the impact that UAB had on college basketball in just four short years. Now the program faced a challenge. For the first time, UAB basketball would be without Oliver Robinson, the man who had been the team's identity for four years. To fill the void left by losing six seniors, Coach Bartow and his staff turned to two high school seniors in Memphis to become the new face of UAB basketball. When we were able to recruit Steve Mitchell and Jerome Mincy, we knew that, that they were special talents and, and, and just good guys, very good players. I can remember coming into my gym one day to talk to my high school coach. He said, I got some good news and bad news. Which one you want first? I said, give me the bad news. He said, he said, John Thompson is not going to be able to come. And I'm like, OK, what's the, what's the good news? He said, UAB called. Gene Bartow and Lee Hunt called, and they want to come and talk to you. I'm like, Coach Bartow, Birmingham? Sure. Uh, and as it turned out, you know, everything he, he mentioned to us in that visit and everything he promised, you know, it, it, it came out to be true. Lee Hunt had been my assistant for several years, and he had gone to Ole Miss as head coach. And Lee had been with me in to try to recruit Jerome on a couple of occasions. So after he takes the old Miss job, he says, what do you think if I try to recruit him? And I said, no. I said, we've spent UAB dollars trying to recruit him. Yeah, I don't want him to go to Ole Miss. He's coming to UAB or somewhere else, but you can't recruit him. So a week or two goes by, and Hunt calls me again and says, you're not going to get him at UAB or something like that. He said, I'd like to go in on him. And, and Jerome had called me less than an hour before saying we'd have the press thing in the morning. And I said, OK, Lee, go ahead and go after him. I didn't even, but the next morning I signed him to UAB. Jerome wasn't the greatest practice player. <laughs> and I'd say, Jerome, you know, you can play to your 50 because you don't ever practice hard. But when the game started, whenever the referee showed up. When the popcorn started popping and tickets were being sold, he was ready to play. That's one soldier you could count on. He was going to bring his A game every night. Jerome used to lock Vic Salem in the old wire lockers over at the locker room, and he used to throw basketballs at Vic, and Vic kept saying, stop it, stop it. But uh, he just kept on and on, and Vic, Vic loved it. Steve had great quickness, very good jumping ability great leadership qualities, very soft touch, 
great jump shot. Uh, played very unselfish. And uh, he just had all the qualities of a great true point guard. Defense, uh, boy, <laughs> Mitchell is on fire. Mitchell now has hit five buckets. I don't recall him missing this afternoon. Mitchell and Mincy would lead their Blazer teams to the NCAA tournament in each of their four years. But perhaps their finest moment came in Anchorage, Alaska, in the great Alaskan shootout. Probably the best three games we ever played, though, when, and back to back to back, were in the Alaska shootout when we beat uh, Tennessee and then Illinois and then Kansas. All of them great programs. They were ranked and uh, they were all close games and we won all three to win the Alaska shootout. We knew early in the summer we were going to that tournament, so we knew we, we you know, this was really our opportunity to put our stamp on, on this program. I felt that, uh, the, you know, the measuring stick had been laid and I'm like, man, we got some shoes to fill here. You know, if, if there was ever a time for us to show the UAB basketball community we, we're gonna keep this, this thing right where it was, then now's the time. But we spent, you know, the summer, right? I had keys to Bell Gym. <laughs> so when the time came for us to go to the Great Alaska Shootout, I think, you know, mentally, we'd accepted that challenge months ago. I played one of my better games in that Illinois game, and we won, and we went on, and, uh, and we got uh, Kansas as well. But it was a fun. It was it was big. It got a, it got the program on the map again, and I think it, it, it thrust us back into uh, the national limelight and back into the top 20. And uh, it was it was the start of us putting our stamp on the program. By the time they graduated in 1986, Steve Mitchell and Jerome Mincy owned nearly every UAB record there was. It wasn't long before another group of young Blazers came to campus looking to put their name in the record books. James Ponder was hard-nosed. He would, if there was a loose ball on the floor or a rebound that it meant a lot of physical contact to get to, James Ponder was going to be right there. James had a lot of wonderful games. He was a, a real winner. My partner didn't cry. Sir Slam, <laughs> Reginald Turner, that's a... Uh, uh, Outstanding, outstanding talent and player. One of my favorite stories about Reg, you know, is I used to coach, uh, stand out in the middle of the floor and grumble and so forth, and Reginald run me down one day. I mean, he was running about as fast as he could run, maybe, and ran right over me, and I jumped up and said, well, that's the first charge anybody's drawn in two weeks. But for about three weeks, I couldn't hardly get in and out of a car. I never told the players, but I drew a charge on him. Reginald, in the era he played in, he and Alan Ogg, and they'll always be favorites. One of the most intriguing and popular Blazers ever was seven-footer Alan Ogg. When I think of Alan Ogg, the main thing I think about is how many seven-footers do you see that like to run? Boy, Allen could change ends and like the wind. I mean, most seven-foot guys don't like to run like Allen Ogg could run. Then, on a frosty March night in Storrs, Connecticut, freshman Albert Rogers stormed into the NIT spotlight to begin what would be one of UAB basketball's most prolific careers. I remember a lot of great play from Albert Rogers. My favorite game with Albert was at Connecticut. They played their games at time in, in the Hartford Civic Center. Well, it just so happened that the Hartford Whalers had a game on the night that they had, they had chosen to play this game, so we had to play in their own campus facility, which was a 5,000-seat band box. And we played a near-perfect game up there. Elbert, as a true freshman, uh, with the bright lights burning, really came through for us and helped carry us on. I don't know, I was so used to riding the bench, it was, I was just ready to get in there anyway. And uh, it was a... Uh, a tremendous basketball atmosphere. Well, the crowd was on me. And he was a freshman, and he just played so great. And it was a great win, which sent us to the NIT Final Four in Madison Square Garden. You just can't say enough good thing about how hard he played and how much he wanted to win every time he stepped on that floor. Then, on a Sunday afternoon in January of 1991, 
Andy Kennedy had the best game of anyone ever to wear green and gold. That day, Kennedy wrote a new page in the UAB record book by scoring 41 points against the St. Louis Billikens. Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. And Charlie Spoonhour remembers that the coach at St. Louis. <laughs> like, would you like me to quote it verbatim? He'll let it go from everywhere. Andy Kennedy starts it with a three. You know, I'm like every shooter that, that when the first two or three go in and that rim seems to expand. There's Andy Kennedy from NBA range again. And I mean, that, that basket must have looked as big as the floor because everything he put up fell in. Kennedy is free, and when he's free, you know the shot is coming. Andy could shoot it anywhere on the floor, so you knew if he got hot, you just feed him the ball. Yeah, everything went that night. Off balance, on balance, backwards, eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, hell of a night. Uh, yeah, he couldn't, uh, and he couldn't miss. We should have got him the ball more. He might have got 60 that day if we could have gotten the ball in his hands more. He just had a golden touch with the basketball. Stanley Jackson proved to be one of the most exciting players in college basketball. Amazing fans with his athletic ability and putting his own stamp on Blazer basketball. Stamp. Stanley Jackson, he did so many good things the four years he was here. Such an entertaining player, so talented, you'd pay to see old Stamp play. In March of 1993, a seemingly routine trip to postseason play turned out to be anything but routine when the NIT selection committee paired UAB and Alabama in a first round game in Tuscaloosa. It was a game that UAB had been waiting years to play. I was, we was ready as a team, I think as a school, we was ready. You know, I don't know how ready Alabama was, but we were ready for them. The people in Birmingham have really been looking forward to this event. I don't know about the other side, but uh, a lot is at stake tonight, if uh, nothing else than bragging rights. Coach Bartow, just another game. I kept saying, just another game. Then the Alabama band came down out of the stands right before the game and played their fight song right in my ear. And I leaned over to my son and I said, I'd rather beat these people than anyone in the world. I don't remember a lot about that game except Robert Shannon being so sick at halftime, uh, laying on the floor as I was trying to talk to the team and uh, getting ready to come out in the second half. And I think I told our team doctor, just leave Robert laying here because uh, I, I just felt that he was too sick to play probably. The Dave Hensley tried. It's like, Rob, you're pretty sick. You should, you need to stop. It's like, Dave, <laughs> ain't no way, man. I mean, unless you tie me down, it's only going to stop me from going this game. But Robert got up very quickly, I think, after I said that and said, no, I want to play. I want to play. And I'm glad he played. He couldn't get me out the game. Robert Shannon's going to take a three. He's going to bury it to the Blazers. Take a one-point lead. Great move by Shannon. He can shoot it from outside as well as taking it. Robert Shannon's three-pointer with a minute and 14 seconds remaining gave UAB the lead for good and a win that Blazer fans will never forget. You know, I can close my eyes now and remember it moment for moment who passed me the ball, you know, how far I shot it, how Coach Bottle's expression was <laughs> until it went in. You know, it, I can remember everything. That's, I mean, that's the greatest moment of my basketball career. The University of Alabama, UAB. 58, Alabama, 56. See, I hope we never play in the next 100 years, or as long as I'm alive, and I hope to go on another 25. I, ho I hope we never play them again. We're 1-0. Oh. <laughs> then, in the fall of 1995, UAB basketball received a commitment from a lanky forward from Detroit's Pershing High School. Carlos Williams wasted no time adding his name to the UAB basketball legacy. Carlos may have been one of, of the, the most real talented players to come in out of high school. I always think of a smile on his face. Carlos was uh, loved to play the game of basketball, and, and off the floor, he always, always smiled. After 18 seasons and more than 350 wins at UAB, Coach Gene Bartow decided to retire from the program that he had built. 
After taking UAB basketball from its infancy to one of college basketball's elite programs, Coach Bartow left UAB in 1996 as a college coaching legend. Coach Bartow didn't need to look far to find his replacement. Murray, who followed me, I think was a very good coach. I think it'll prove out over the years that he's a very good coach. In my mind, there's no better young basketball mind than Murray. The Blazers advanced to postseason play in each of his first three seasons, including a trip to the NCAA tournament in 1999. Murray loved this university, and to him, this job was the number one job in America. After six seasons at the helm, the program transitioned again, and for the first time in its history, a UAB basketball team would be coached by someone not named Bartow. That coach would be Birmingham native Mike Anderson, called home to continue the UAB basketball legacy. I only know one thing, how to win. I know how to win. I've always liked Mike. I think he's a very good coach. I think he's a good fit for UAB. And I think he's got a chance to take it to the next level. Coach Anderson's trademark fastest 40 minutes in basketball has energized Bartow Arena and excited fans across the country with its tenacious defense and thrilling high-flying pace of play. I like Mike's coaching style. I like the way he teaches. I like the way he interacts with his players. And, and I like his, his style of getting the job done. It's fun basketball. You're looking at a guy that expects to win. Uh, not, you know, a lot of people say tomorrow, but I'm one of those guys I expect to win any time I line up on the floor. Uh, and you may beat me, but uh, you're going to be in for a fight. And from a, a fan standpoint, you see these guys just busting their tails and just leaving on the floor, diving, playing defense, playing together. Uh, just trying to give themselves a chance to win. I think you can appreciate that because to me that's blue collar. Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky would be the stage for Coach Anderson to showcase his style of play for the nation as the Blazers went on to one of the most exciting and improbable runs in school history. After defeating Charlotte in the opening round of the 2003 Conference USA Tournament, number eight ranked Marquette and All-American Dwayne Wade were standing in the Blazers' way. They were trying to get to the NCAA tournament, and the only way you do that, you got to go through Marquette. And they were a ranked team, and, and, it, and it gave our guys a signature game of, okay, this is what UAB is about. Riding on the shoulders of diminutive guards Mo Finley and Eric Bush, the fastest 40 minutes in basketball elevated its game and exhausted Marquette. I give Bush a lot of credit. Bush just willed that team and pushed them and pushed himself. Uh, boy, he made some big plays for us. Uh, uh, and, and a lot of it was done from the defensive side. And he was the reason why we had a chance to make the run last year. Eric Bush, he was a genie let out a bottle. I mean, he was just unbelievable the way he played. Mo Finley, I mean, the way he shot the three and the way they moved up and down, people was excited about him. Eric Bush was our leader, our team leader, and I was his running mate. From a coaching standpoint, you have a guy like Mo Finley on your basketball team, uh, you've got to find a way to use him. But to see it all come together, that's, that was a remarkable story. That, that was, I have to say myself. Uh, and again, you know, when you're winning, you're playing basketball, you're winning, confidence breeds, and, and our players, they gave it all and, uh, to give themselves a chance to win. I mean, they were Final Four team in the end, but uh, that night, we were better than those guys that night. I can remember sitting in the shower after that game smiling, just smiling a lot. Uh, it was a great feeling being Marquette. Great, great feeling being Marquette. Then on February 18th, 2004, Coach Anderson's Blazers put their stamp on Bartow Arena by defeating the number 12 ranked Cincinnati Bearcats in front of a record crowd of more than 9,300. The win over Cincinnati propelled the Blazers to their first ever Conference USA title and into the NCAA tournament for the first time in Coach Anderson's tenure. In recognition of his achievements, 
Coach Anderson was named the 2004 Conference USA Coach of the Year. I think that was it was a major goal, but we weren't satisfied. You know, a lot of people get to the tournament, but how many people say, hey, we won a game in the tournament? So, you know, that was our biggest thing. We was like, okay, now we're there. Let's let them know we're here. The Blazers headed to Columbus, Ohio as a number nine seed to face the eighth seeded Washington Huskies in hopes of the program's first NCAA tournament win since 1986. The nation watched as UAB and Washington battled back and forth in one of the most exciting and high scoring games in tournament history. Late in the second half, with Washington beginning to seize momentum, Sophomore point guard Squeaky Johnson's buzzer-beating shot regained control for the Blazers. We've never been to the NCAA tournament, you know, so we didn't know what to expect. But I think once we got out down the court and realized, you know, hey, it's, it's just basketball, you know, and so I think we all relaxed once we got on the court. As the game drew down to its final seconds, the Blazers pulled out a thrilling 102-100 to win led by a career game from sophomore DeMario Eddins and clutch play from senior leaders Mo Finley, Sidney Ball, Gabe Kennedy, and Tony Johnson. He got it, he got it. Let's go, let's go. Pick him up right there, son. Move your feet, move your feet. After defeating the Huskies, the Blazers did not have the luxury of celebrating the program's first tournament win since 1986. They immediately turned their attention to their next task, taking on the nation's number one team, the University of Kentucky. Nationwide Arena was at full capacity when Coach Anderson's Blazers took the floor as huge underdogs against the tournament favorite Wildcats. But right from the tip, everyone in attendance could see that this game was not going to be an easy one for Kentucky. Challenged on every play and frustrated by UAB's tireless defense, the Wildcats found themselves in a dogfight. Final seconds of the first half as Tubby Smith's heavily favored Kentucky Wildcats down by 11. The Blazers took a nine-point lead into halftime and came out determined not to let Kentucky take control of the game. With just under 12 minutes remaining in the second half, a Kentucky fast break turned from certain momentum for the Wildcats into the most remarkable play in UAB basketball history. They start off on their break. And they had the numbers like a three on one break, and I was the only one back. And uh, I think it was Antoine Ball tried to make a, a pass to, to somebody on the team. I just caught the ball, and something in the back of my head just said, throw it down the court. And I didn't have no other way to throw it down the court but, but backwards. And I did, and luckily, it was my teammate, let alone my twin brother, to get the pass and slam it home. Rebound to Robbie Moss, and then they The pass from twin brothers Ronell and Donnell Taylor brought the crowd to a fever pitch and instantly swung all energy to the side of the underdog. With just under two minutes to play, Kentucky seemed to have regained control of the game. Trailing by two points, the Blazers drew up a play to get the ball in the hands of their leader, senior Mo Finley. 140 left, here's the three. Finley's three from deep in the corner momentarily regained the lead during a wild flurry of scoring that would see the Blazers fall behind once again with 29 seconds remaining. Coach Anderson called a timeout to draw up a play that would get the ball in the hands of senior Mo Finley with the game and the season on the line. This is when they usually look for Mo Finley. Squeaky Johnson to Finley. Takes for the lead. That play will forever be known in Blazer basketball history as the shot. Finley's shot and the Blazers' win over Kentucky catapulted the program to the forefront of the sports world. Although the Blazers' season ended a week later at the hands of the Kansas Jayhawks, the memorable run to the Sweet 16 signified the national resurgence of UAB basketball. 
take great pride in, in, in being a part of the UAB family. And, and I'm very proud that, 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 again, Mike has got this program going in a direction which can make me proud as an alumnus and as a former player. And, and, and I'm a big fan and I'm a big supporter of UAB basketball. My vision for the future of the program is to keep winning, go to the Final Four, and win a national championship. That's always been my goal. I really think that the best is yet to come. And with Coach Anderson leading us, I don't, I don't see anything in our way. In just 25 years, UAB basketball has grown from its humble roots to step onto college basketball's biggest stage, averaging more than 20 wins a season. The legacy of Gene Bartow continues today in a program that has a reputation for winning with consistency in class. From Bartow's Blazers to the fastest 40 minutes in basketball, UAB basketball has been an amazing story whose finest chapters are still to come. My vision, number one, is, is to win a national championship. Uh, I can do that here at UAB. I just know that in my heart, I can do it here.